science of marine life is among the most fascinating of the branches of biology. Knowledge of the life patterns of certain marine animals can often be applied to the study of higher forms of life. In marine environments of seashore and tide pool live the purple sea urchins. Sea urchins have long been used as experimental animals in studies of reproduction and genetics. These invertebrates are classified as echinoderms, a name taken from two Greek words meaning spiny and skin. The many spine-like structures are responsible for this descriptive name. The purple sea urchin is a widely distributed species. Adults generally measure between one and two inches in diameter and are radially symmetrical. The sexes are separate, though difficult to distinguish even after dissection. A male specimen is on the right, female on the left. Five reproductive organs, gonads, radiate from the oral cavity. The female gonads, ovaries, produce ova or egg cells. By removing a portion of an exposed ovary, we can obtain some of the ova. Under the microscope, the ova or eggs are easily distinguished. This time, we remove a portion of a male gonad, the testis. Soon the fluid secreted by the testis appears. In this fluid are literally millions of sperm cells. Within the testis, the sperm cells are relatively immobile. For a more detailed view of the male sex cell, we'll use the higher magnification of the electron microscope. As shown by these three specimens, the sperm cell consists of a slender tail and a head, which measures about three microns in diameter. Now, a rarely seen cross-section through the head to reveal its delicate anatomy. In structures at the base are concentrations of sugars. The oxidation of sugars provides energy for the vigorous movement of the sperm. Most of the head is nucleus and contains the hereditary materials, the DNA of the cell. In the tip is an enzyme that acts to perforate the female egg cell and provides entrance for the sperm, resulting in fertilization. The tiny sperm cells, upon contact with seawater, begin their characteristic rapid swimming motion through the beating action of their flagella, or tails. The role played by the sperm in fertilization can be clearly demonstrated in this experiment. We place mature female sea urchins into a tank of seawater. Now we introduce a freshly dissected sea urchin testis. The whitish liquid, spermatic fluid, containing numerous sperm cells, disperses over the females. The presence of sperm appears to act as a stimulus to the females, which begin to ovulate by passing fluid containing masses of ova into the water. This stimulation also takes place in reverse. That is, the presence of ova in the seawater will stimulate the excretion of spermatic fluid. This same phenomenon occurs in the natural habitat of the sea urchin. The breeding season usually begins in August. At this time, the milky white secretion of the gonads, in which the eggs are suspended, is passed from the female's body. This process, ovulation, releases anywhere from 150 to 250,000 eggs an hour, which are dispersed through the water, aided by currents and wave motion. Numerous eggs can be seen in this photomicrographic view. As the eggs come in contact with mature male sea urchins, the testes are stimulated. Spermatic fluid is released in quantity into the sea. These are the first motion pictures of this fascinating phenomenon as it occurs in nature. During the breeding season, fluids containing sperm cells and eggs cloud the tide pool where the sea urchins live. But to observe the actual process of fertilization, we must return to the laboratory. From our living specimens, we select a mature female. Part of the test or protective covering of the animal may be removed to expose the ovaries. 
We then place the animal over the mouth of a beaker filled with seawater. A few drops of potassium chloride are sufficient to stimulate the activity of the ovaries to produce ripe eggs. Some of the eggs can be rinsed from the white fluid and placed under the microscope. In this close-up of a single egg, the protective membrane surrounding the ovum is seen as a light-colored ring, while the nucleus is the small light area. Now we've placed some spermatic fluid on the ovum. Within seconds, the sperm cells gather densely around the membrane of the egg cell. The underlying cause of this attraction is a chemical stimulus. To demonstrate this attraction, chemotaxis will begin with fluid containing live egg cells. Next, spermatic fluid containing live sperm is dropped in the watch glass. What follows is dramatically shown in time-lapse photography. The sperm cells move toward and concentrate around the mass of egg cells in the center of the watch glass. This time, instead of live egg cells, we'll use crystals of gynogamone, a chemical extracted from purple sea urchin egg cells. Gynogamone crystals are made up of complex protein molecules. When the crystals are dissolved in seawater, the sperm cells are attracted just as they were to the live egg cells. Such experiments have indicated that gynogamone is the substance that attracts sperm to the ovum. Actual fertilization is about to take place along the right edge of the ovum as the sperm perforates the egg membrane. What happens during this process is best shown in electron photomicrographs. Here is a sperm at the moment of contact with the ovum. The pointed structure extending from the head at the right is believed to contain lipsin an enzyme which can dissolve the ovum's protective membrane, allowing the head of the sperm to enter the ovum. As this occurs, the female sex cell begins to develop a protruding structure, seen at the upper left, called the receptive cone. On the surface of the cone, a tiny sperm is visible. The sperm cell is more or less being pulled through this cone. Here, the head of the sperm cell is emerging from the inner surface of the receptive cone. It will proceed toward the nucleus of the ovum, where fertilization will take place. Once fertilization of the ovum by a single sperm occurs, there develops around the egg cell another membrane called the fertilization membrane. The formation and thickening of the membrane may be easily observed. Development of the fertilization membrane is rapid, usually taking about 20 seconds. The thick fertilization membrane does not react to the enzyme lipsin, so, as we see in this closer view, it cannot be penetrated by other sperm cells. The streaming cytoplasm of the fertilized egg, or zygote, now undergoes a series of chemical and physical changes as it prepares for cleavage, or division of the egg into an increasing number of cells. After about half an hour, the first cleavage occurs as the chromosomes in the nucleus are duplicated, and the cytoplasm is divided through the furrowing of the cell membrane. The resulting cells are called blastomeres. The process of cleavage is repeated to produce four blastomeres. In the third division of cells in the developing sea urchin embryo, eight cells are produced. Subsequent cleavage produces a blastula, or hollow ball, within which is a structure called the blastocele, 
or segmentation cavity. The blastula is not evident in these pictures because we very gently flattened the developing embryo onto the slide so as to observe the process of cleavage more clearly. As cleavage goes on, more and more cells are produced by simple division, mitosis. As cleavage continues and the cells are doubled, 16, 32, 64, and so on, gastrulation takes place. Gastrulation is a complex process whereby layers of cells are moved into the interior of the blastula. After gastrulation, cells of various body tissues and structures are formed through differentiation. This rapid development of the embryo continues for several days. By the fifth day, the tiny sea urchin is a microscopic, free-swimming larva. It is bilaterally symmetrical. Both halves of the body structure are identical. At 10 days, the larva has grown to about four-fifths of a millimeter in length. It will soon undergo metamorphosis, during which it will become radially symmetrical, a body form typical of several invertebrate classes. At 20 days, the test or outer shell appears, as well as spines and tube feet, characteristic of the adult. During metamorphosis, the sea urchin has changed from a swimming bilaterally symmetrical larva to a radially symmetrical adult, adapted to life in shallow ocean waters or tide pools. After maturation, the sea urchin embeds itself into a rock, which then becomes the urchin's permanent home. Because of its high rate of reproduction and the relative ease with which its fertilization and developmental processes may be studied, the sea urchin has become a highly valued experimental animal in studies of genetics and embryonic development. <laughs>